Hi everyone. In this short video, I'll be talking about uh, platonic solids and mesh modeling. Uh, this was an earlier script I published uh, on uh, kangaroo relaxation and paneling. There are a lot of uh, different details we'll be focusing on. And the first part of it is actually about permitic mesh generation. Uh, so I'll be showing you uh, kind of a um, walkthrough of how the script is structured. Um, for this one to work, we actually start with a boundary representation. Uh, this could be any type of platonic solid. And we're going to um, actually generate a scaled version of it inside and make connections that are quads um, between the outer and the inner edges. So um, one uh, way to approach this um, is to use um, uh, kind of uh, the hedron uh, generator, which um, which I also included. It's uh, located here. This is a, a plugin you can install into Rhino. And this one actually offers you um, diverse types of uh, platonic solids and polyhedra. Um, there are a lot of uh, ones to cover, but I'll be keeping um, this video as simple as possible. So we'll be looking at only platonic solids. So um, if we start with cube, you can actually generate a cube, but it will be generated as a mesh. So um, the way I uh, approach this is uh, you can either model them as a boundary representation. So you can um, basically generate um, a boundary representation of the of the form you want. And then uh, once we assign it, um, let me actually turn off uh, these previews so that we will look at what the output of the geometry is. So this is uh, this is the shape that we get, and this is actually a parametric uh, subdivided segmented uh, mesh surface. And we can also uh, have a lot of parametric control over it. So what's happening is uh, the platonic solid. Um, uh, we are using the platonic solid as um, as a driver to generate this sort of uh, subdivided and segmented mesh. And this is actually the output uh, through Weaverbert subdivision algorithm. Uh, but as you can see, uh, because we are inputting a cube, we get a six sided uh, subdivided and smoothed out uh, mesh geometry. Um, let's actually walk through what's happening uh, in this code uh, quickly. So we, we start with the geometry, which is the cube and we generate a scaled version of it uh, inside. So let's look at um, where that is. So this is uh, this is the input geometry. And then we scale it down um, to this geometry here. Let me turn this off as well. And let's keep it there for now. The other part of it is to actually deconstruct the boundary representation face by face. So if we have a cube, we get six untrimmed surfaces. And then we can grab them one by one. Here I'm using um, getting the number of faces. We have six and supplying it to a series to grab list item. And then individually, um, we are actually scaling each face down. So uh, this is uh, basically for the connection. So, so what we want is to actually make a connection between these scaled faces and the inner faces. And um, those are all going to be quad type of connections. So this scaled version, we can also deconstruct it to get its edges. And this is the, these are the edges or the faces of the inner cube. And we use the same list item to uh, manipulate this da uh, data. And then uh, these two are basically lined up here. So you can see that uh, this one is also grafted. So what's happening is we have an inner uh, boundary representation that has six faces, each of them containing four vertices, and the same goes for the scaled versions of the other faces. And I'm grabbing each of their um, edges, the curves, and then getting their endpoints. Uh, you can also do this filtering through the vertices, but I like doing it this way because we want to actually supply them uh, individually to this V function. And the V function, uh, once you graph this, it actually puts them into clusters uh, of four. So what's going to happen is the inner edges and the outer edges will be matched as um, as four vertices defining a quad there. 
and all you have to do is supply each of these uh, four vertices with the quad function to construct meshes. So that reconstructed mesh, let's actually look at how that comes out. Uh, that would be a form like this. So that would be um, basically a mesh that is made out of individual faces. And one thing that you have to be cautious here is the direction of this face. So if you go to display options and go to in the rendered mode, uh, turn on the back face settings, use a single color for the back faces and make it a contrasting color. Let's make it red. You want all these red to coincide with the inside of this form or the outside of the form. Uh, basically, we want the surface normal direction to be uh, to be consistent. If uh, one of these is flipped, uh, you get an irregularity like this, let's say. This will create a problem with the subdivision. So if I uh, join this, for instance, uh, now this mesh is joined and I supply it to the um, Weaver Birds loop subdivision algorithm, let's say. So set one mesh here and hide this. Um, you can see here, uh, this will actually cause uh, some irregularity. This is not uh, what we want. So we want topologically uh, consistency here. Uh, let me actually go back to turning these off. So the final stages is actually using Beaver Bert's uh, joint function and the loop subdivision. So once we do the uh, segmentation, um, this would actually add more uh, definition to our input mesh and it will also um, uh, add more triangles and um, definition to the uh, to the geometry and this could work with any type of platonic uh, solid that you might have so um, here I have for instance um, a dodecahedron and if I plug this in and hide it you can see that we can actually create um, a lot of other types of uh, segmented geometry as well uh, so this one came out to be like this and uh, keep in mind that this is parametric so we can control the scale of the inner uh, geometry and the outer uh, faces as well so we can make them thinner or thicker and we can create all the uh, parametric variations uh, for the sequence of this exercise i want to use these for kangaroo relaxation so there will be some more curvature generated using physics uh, engine um, but basically um, these could be um, used for a bunch of other types of uh, purposes, like for generative modeling of these sorts of geometries. And one thing I want to mention before um, ending this video is uh, once you're using the polyhedron tool, um, you can actually choose other types of geometries here. For instance, I'm using this uh, icosahedron, but keep in mind that these come in as meshes. So um, what I do is I first explode them and then extract their wireframe and then using the wireframe uh, generate planar surfaces um, now once you join these surfaces um, they will be let's do select surfaces and join this will be uh, a boundary representation that we can input to the script so if i go back here and choose this geometry this would also work now um, as an input. this uh, The way that I built this one doesn't actually s start with a mesh, it starts with a boundary representation. So you need to um, you need to actually convert the input, um, the generated platonic solids that come in as meshes to, uh, to polyhedra, uh, to boundary representations basically. So um, there you have it. So this is the first part of the uh, parametric modeling of um, kangaroo relaxation and uh, stripping of uh, pieces into digital fabrication and we can work with all of different types of polyhedra and uh, we first uh, convert them into meshes and then we can do a lot of subdivision um, type of modeling that adds more definition or we can also um, uh, we can also keep the input uh, as is for further uh, kangaroo relaxation algorithm, which will be uh, covered in a future video. So uh, thanks for watching this one. And uh, if you want to follow the uh, next videos about uh, these sorts of modeling, uh, please subscribe to the channel and keep up the notifications. And um, thank you for watching again, and I'll see you next time.